today's topic is one that I know is really hard for most people, yet it is one that everyone has to confront throughout their lives in order to advance, become a better friend, family member, or leader. Sometimes the most important conversations are the most difficult to engage in, but they can be the most life-changing. I am Lee Wilson, and this is Focus Forward Business Design. about you, but I have a pretty good idea that like myself, you are not one that particularly enjoys the thought of having that uncomfortable discussion with someone. It may be your partner, your teenager, a coworker, or even your boss. It just doesn't matter who it is. It's just not something that we look forward to. And in fact, we'll oftentimes push it back, hoping that the situation will resolve itself or convince ourselves that it's really not as bad as we're imagining. What I can tell you is if you have gotten to the point of thinking about it and making up excuses not to have the conversation, then it warrants the time and the effort. So what makes us so hesitant and downright sick to our stomachs to have these conversations? It's fairly simple, fear. We build this event up in our heads to something that is oftentimes way larger than it actually needs to be. So we have ourselves scared to death of the outcome, literally freaking ourselves out. We're scared of losing someone, of being fired, or having our child shut down or rebel, or making the situation worse or even more uncomfortable. Those are all really fair concerns. If we don't prepare and handle the subject tactfully and with respect to the other person, Unfortunately, what most of us don't visualize is what the outcome looks like when everything goes just as it should. After all, you know the conversation is needed so that change can happen, right? You are not going into this chat with the goal of making things worse. So why would we visualize the worst possible outcome? Because many people are fear-based. Our minds have been taught to be fear-based due to prior experiences in our lives. We need to stop and reprogram ourselves to envision how amazing the end result is going to be after the tough conversation goes the way it should. You could even go so far as to be excited to talk to this person and have a fresh beginning to whatever the problem may be. Consider it a strategy session like you would with a team or a family planning a new project. The important thing here though is that it cannot be one-sided. Everyone's opinions or thoughts matter and they need to know that and they need to feel that. This is what keeps things moving forward so that no one person is feeling attacked. We've all been in the position of being called into what we considered a superior's office. It could be the principal, your boss, your parents' living room, or a meeting with your spouse or partner. We walk into the room with our stomach in knots as the invitation was likely not sent with flowers and a pretty invite on linen paper. More likely, it sounded something like this. Lee, we need to talk. Please be in my office at three. Or it could be this. You walk into the room and are asked to sit down. We need to talk. No warning at all, just boom, let's do this. Immediately, you're put on the defense. This is not the way to a constructive, forward-moving conversation. Just saying. So let's rewrite how these much-needed, potentially charged conversations could go. I'm going to give you three strategies to help you make difficult conversations opportunities for growth and advancement. Then I'm going to give you a bonus on a few tips on talking to teens, since we know that that can show up as a totally different audience. So let's get into this. Take out your journals and be ready to take some notes. I encourage you as we're going through this that if something resonates with you and your mind starts wandering to a personal situation, I want you to pause this video and take the opportunity to write out some things that are coming to your mind. This will give you the chance to go back, look at those as you're preparing for a conversation in your life that you think may be just a little bit sticky or worse yet, you've been avoiding. Then continue on with the video. In this way, you're able to workshop this a bit and really make it relevant to you and improving your world. Number one, be clear about how you feel and what your desired outcome is. So often in tough conversations, we have ourselves so worked up 
and so many thoughts running through our heads that we fail to communicate clearly or directly and the situation just escalates from bad to confusion to potentially worse. If you can carefully plan out what you want to say beforehand, you will likely come across as more sincere and less emotional. Begin with telling the other person how you're feeling and what your end goal for this discussion is. It's okay to have a list of notes or keywords with you so that you don't miss any important points or questions that you wanted to include. Using statements that include I instead of you show you're taking responsibility and not attacking or placing blame on the other person. For example, I'm really feeling overloaded and I don't feel I can put out the quality that we need and the team expects instead of you're loading too much extra work on me and that there is no way that I can keep up. Practice what you're going to say before your meeting. The dog is a great audience and they won't whisper a word that you said to anyone. Number two, step into their shoes. We get so in our heads about how we're affected and how we're slighted that we oftentimes forget that there's another person that is likely feeling that something is unjust in their situation as well. Rarely does a difficult conversation come up when just one side is feeling that something needs to be remedied. Before having that conversation and even as you're preparing what you're going to say, it can prove very helpful to take a step back, try to imagine what the other person is experiencing. How are they viewing the situation that is different than how you're seeing it? You may even want to go one step deeper into how you got into this space in the first place. Is this person going through something personally that is affecting their behavior? Did you do or say something that was construed as hurtful but was never meant that way? When we can see the whole picture from both perspectives, oftentimes it becomes a much clearer picture. Number three, be a better listener. The way that we learn is much more often through what we hear versus what we say. This is key in the beginning of the conversation when you are both likely a bit guarded. If they know you're willing to listen, they will be way more willing to open up and share. Silence can be a challenge though. We all want to jump in and rescue the other side. Let the silence ride. It will naturally promote a better, more meaningful discussion. Taking the time to listen to the other person's objections or feelings, this can go a long way in coming to an understanding it's what is truly causing the problem. Asking questions and really hearing what the person is saying as opposed to preparing your next argument or statement will open up the discussion and you will likely find that a meaningful discussion starts happening versus a debate where both parties are determined to be heard and both are determined to be right. All right, I promised you a bonus. What about those teens? I bet if your teenager, teenage years were anything like mine, you can remember a few times, probably more than one or two, that you were not the model child and may have been on the other side of a conversation with your parents or another adult that was not very comfortable. If you were the typical teen, you were likely not listening with an open mind and had a million other things going through your head of which were probably not directed favorably towards that adult. Well, now things have flipped and you get to be the adult on the other side of the fence. The supposed all-knowing wise one. I've been through this side as well and all I can say is that I now have more respect for those adults that tried to correct my misled actions because I now know that they were as frustrated and lost as the teens. The difference is the adults have learned that they themselves still have so much more to learn. And the teens oftentimes think they've got it all under control and they are oh so wise. This is not meant to talk down to our teenage population as I truly believe that they have so much more to offer than 90% of the population gives them credit for. However, we as adults must appreciate that having a discussion with a young adult requires a different skill set than with our co coworkers or with our life partner yet we don't give them the credit of being as wise as they truly are. But we expect them to hold difficult conversations at the same level as an adult. By doing this, we're sending a mixed message that needs to be clearer and more concise. Are they children or are they adults? We don't get it both ways. There's the problem, they're neither. 
The strategies that we discussed earlier need to be a part of our arsenal for our tough talks with teens. But let's look at a couple of other things we can add in to make the end result a positive one for both. Number one, this is a tough one, stay calm. For some reason, raising our voices or changing our tone to one that is demeaning seems to be more natural when we talk to our children than would ever be considered acceptable when speaking to another adult. Staying calm and asking questions is key to a positive talk. Knowing your topics ahead of time and being prepared with questions that allow your child to express themselves, this is key. This is a time when silent can be the hardest but most important piece. Raising the level of trust should always be an ongoing goal so that your teen knows that you're a safe zone and are prepared to listen so that you can jointly come up with a solution. The skill of being able to listen and develop plans together is one of the strongest pieces in developing a long and positive relationship. Number two, because we've determined that this has to be a two-way conversation, that by default elimits, eliminates the lecturing piece. I know that this may go against everything that you have ever experienced in the adult teen history of the world, as this has typically been the model. It's time to break the mold. Coming from an area of support and advice, this can go a long way in letting your team know that you're here to help and be a sounding board. Offering advice or sharing a story that has similarities can feel more like friends having a conversation and trying to figure out some struggle rather than an adversarial strike. Finally, this is the toughest one of all, the silence of the wall. Your team just won't talk. It happens. We all do it, and at the end of the day, trust is what will usually break down that wall. This doesn't happen overnight, and especially if you're rebuilding a relationship that's been less than ideal for a while. Often talking about something lighthearted that has absolutely nothing to do with either of your frustrations, this can go a long way. Because you're the adult and likely instigated this rendezvous of sorts, you can easily start asking some fun questions that have nothing to do with anything. For example, if you could do anything you wanted tomorrow, what would you do? Or how about sharing a favorite memory? This may not get you to resolving the issue at hand, but it will begin to form a bond that may not have been there for a bit. And in turn, communicating will get easier. And then dealing with the big rocks will hopefully not be so painful. I know this had a lot of paths that we went down, but I hope that you're able to pull out a couple of nuggets that will help you next time that you have to have that difficult conversation. Just remember that avoidance never makes it go away, and the end result to most conversations handled well will result in growth and advancement. Please share this, and of course, hit that like button as we try to reach out to as many people like yourselves that are looking to better themselves. And as always, remember, it is always your choice to focus forward.